Hi, I'm Don Tipping. I'm here at Seven Seeds Farm and Siskiyou Seeds. And I want to share with you how easy it is to save your own tomato seed. And I was at the farmer's market yesterday and a, a buddy of mine had some varieties of cherry tomatoes I'd never seen before, so I bought some. These ones here, they're called Sunshine Bumblebee. Incredibly tasty. And I want to save some seed from them. So I've taken the hats off them. You can see here and what I'm going to do is just put them in this yogurt container. You can see I've labeled it with the date and I'm just going to squish them up using a stick here. Whoa, got some in my eye. I don't know if they'll grow there, but if they do, I'm in trouble. And I squish them up in here until they're just kind of a mash. And I'm going to let this ferment for a few days until it's kind of a frothy, gross mess. And then I'll add water and stir and then pour off the slop and then the seeds will settle to the bottom and then once I have that situation I'll pour out that seed onto some screens and allow it to dry and I'll have this variety and I can grow it next year and see how it does here. Here's another variety that I found yesterday at the market and these ones are called champagne bubbles or white currant. It's Solanum pimpinilla folium. It's a different species of tomato, incredibly tasty. Um, has won actually the taste tests at numerous farms for best cherry tomato. So this one too, I've um, labeled a little container here. And again, you wanna take the tops off them because they will um, be a problem later. And you've gotta make sure you're not adding any tomato seeds from the prior batch. So I'm you know, doing my best to Maintain due diligence, diligence and ensure that that doesn't occur. And I'm going to squish these ones up the same way. And basically why you need to ferment the tomato seed is because inside the tomato are all the conditions necessary for the seed to germinate. Think, it's got moisture, warmth, and light. So that gelatinous coating that's around a tomato seed actually inhibits the germination of the seed. And the way we can take care of that is to ferment it. And the fermentation actually destroys a number of seed-borne diseases that we don't want to pass on to subsequent generations of these plants. And for myself, I'll be growing this next year with an eye towards adding it to our 2019 seed offerings, if we like it. You know, trying a couple at the market is one thing, but we got to see how it grows here, how it handles pests and disease, and and just how everybody here likes them. So, you know, I've gotten it to this kind of condition. You can see in there. And I'm gonna let that ferment. And again, labeling is really important. Um, this is another one that I'm really curious to um, see how it grows. It's called Speckled Roman. And it has this cool striping on it. It's not a very productive variety from my trials. But you, uh, considering that tomatoes are a self-pollinated crop, you can actually save seed from a single tomato or even a single plant, whereas with your cross-pollinated crops like broccoli, onions, the squash family, uh, melons, cucumbers, that type of thing, you need uh, numerous individuals in, in order to avoid bottlenecking the genetic diversity in the population. So, um, you know, here at Siskiyou Seeds, this is how we do this on a larger scale suit too. Uh, here's some Roma tomatoes and I, we just kind of ramp up the whole uh, process and you can see here how this is how we squash this and ferment, you know, larger amounts of seed and this is how we get seeds to the people. So I want to encourage everybody here, saving your own tomato seed is a really easy uh, first step towards becoming a seed saver because once again, it's a self-pollinated crop. You can start right off with ones you get at the market and uh, be on the way towards having a closer relationship with your food, saving money, and uh, sharing the process with your friends and family. So all the best to you and your family and your gardens. Thanks.